spins a web any size. Catch your seeds just like flies. Look out! Here comes the Spider-Man. Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my most absolutely favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like, links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the Marvel fan site that'll have plots and offices and character bios for this issue. The Amazing Spider-Man, number 308. Now, this book was shipping twice monthly. Todd McFarlane had to draw a lot. It is kind of... Um, here's this amazing cover. Who Kidnapped Mary Jane? Now, look at this. Look at this. Taskmaster... And Spider-Man. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Tom McFarlane could draw. I am so sad that he's no longer drawing. Not really. He has a toy company. Doesn't draw Spawn. Doesn't write Spawn. Uh, comes up with a cover every blue moon. Does this little toy company. Here you see the uh, spider on the grass. Um... God, Todd, I wish you would draw again. I'm a capitalist. I'm all for him making coin. But damn it, man. Enough is enough. You got plenty. Come draw for the love of God. Draw, draw, draw. Amazing, amazing. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this just beautiful? All right. I have a playlist. I have a Tom McFarlane playlist and an Amazing Spider-Man, or sorry, a Spider-Man playlist. Uh, so check either one out. Um, the title is Dread. Mr. Parker, I'd like to hear your statement again, please. If it's not too much, but I'm afraid the only lead we have in, oh, sorry, in trying to find your missing wife. So, sorry, I... I uh, didn't realize they split it. I haven't read it in forever. I have two copies of this book. I have a reader's copy that I purchased originally when I bought this issue. And I was in a uh, freshman in high school that is tattered and trashed to bits. But I do have a very good copy that I bought several years ago prior to COVID ruining everything. And marking up these these prices. So, uh, here are our credits with uh, David M Michelini or Michelini. I like to say Michelini, but oh, am I? I hear Todd McFarlane say Michelini. And, of course, Todd McFarlane drawing the art here. Beautiful. Todd McFarlane um, isn't really an inker. He is more of a dasher. He dashes lines. But they're beautiful. I just... His style is so unique here. Um, so we get kind of a thing. He's been out of town. He came back. Mary Jane is gone. So he asks, What are you and the NYPD going to do about it? I love this mustache. The Is it called the handlebar? Handle, no, that's not the handlebar. And so the dude says, I love the silhouette here with... Everything we can, Mr. Parker. The lab boys are all set to analyze uh, what they found. And while I can understand your pain, I don't think tearing yourself up apart will help anything. Just try to relax, stay by the phone, and we'll be in touch as he walks away. And Peter's like, yeah, thanks. So, again, McFarlane is a dasher. Just ch -ch 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 -ch. He uses a pen. Um, for his drawing, uh, he doesn't really use a brush. So, and just a reminder, when I started covering the Tom McFarlane Amazing Spider-Man, actually started with issue 314 and worked my way up, I've gone back now to cover. So, you and the playlist will happen to see, uh, stuff from 314 up, and then, of course, then, uh, 298 till current so i'm filling up the the middle gap so 
And so Peter's feeling really bad. And he says, I always figure I could deal with the reality, but how do you cope with a nightmare coming true? My greatest fear about getting married was always that someone would try to get me through Mary Jane. But I thought my having a secret identity would protect her. I guess I was wrong. Of course, we know she was not kidnapped by a supervillain. And so Peter continues with his thoughts. Um, again, some of the most beautiful. I'm also covering McFarlane's Hulk. And some of the really cool things that he does is the reverse. That just silhouettes here with another one there. But the other, oh, it's just, um, he's so creative at these silhouettes. Him and Frank Miller are the silhouette kings. So, uh, Peter continues, why else would anyone kidnap MJ? Maybe they made the connection with Webbs, the book of my Spider-Man photographs I've been promoting. Or maybe someone just got smart and finally figured out that I'm Spider-Man. So here he is taking his uh, costume out. Love this. Look at this. So much a McFarlaneism. But whatever the reason, wherever they are, I'll find them. And when I do, I'm going to make them very, very sorry. Unknowingly, that right underneath, because they live in the penthouse, because Mary Jane is a model... Uh, during this time, I really don't know what she's doing now because, uh, I don't really read it anymore. Um, so Jonathan Caesar is saying, I'm sorry, Mary Jane. I thought you'd appreciate the decor. I don't want, I don't, sorry. I don't just let anyone see my collections, you know, besides. And so we got this nice, uh, perspective here, this nice, uh, bird's eye view. As the guest of Jonathan Caesar, you've been provided with the most elegant of wardrobes, the grandest of comfort delights. Your every comfort has been seen to. What else could I possibly give that would please you? You know, except freedom. <laughs> and so I love the two henchmen right beside her. Um, and he's like, how about a 367 Magnum or two? And he... Uh, kind of strokes her and says, Tesk, such harsh humor from so, from so delicate a flower. And she's like, don't touch me. And she slaps him. And Caesar's like, oh. And whack. He just wails her. And he says, that hurt me more than it did you, my dear. Please, Sniff, don't hurt me again. And she's like, he's insane and dangerous. So she gets to the important question. What do you want? You can see a little bit of the um, the blood running here. And so he answers, what I've always wanted, sweetness, everything. And I've always gotten what I wanted, even as a child. If something got in my way, I found a way around it or... And he, he uh, kisses um, the statue of her. Through it, you see, I mastered manipulation early on. Even my parents learned never to deny me. I believe it was shortly after my brother disappeared. He should never have said no when I asked for his train set. Poor Leonard. This is very similar to the origin of... Um, one of the dumbest X-Men villains, and I've gone on record saying how much I hate Arcade. Um, but I do, and it's very similar to to his origin. So, uh, But when you got a, uh egomaniac, this would be the perfect supervillain origin for an egomaniac here. But again, um, great panel here. So, Caesar continues, as I age, I refined my skills, made connections in both the business and criminal worlds. And when I saw your picture on a magazine cover and realized what I really wanted in life, I waited. I'm ever so patient. I maneuvered, I, sorry, I maneuvered you to the top of the waiting list here at the Bedford Towers. Then had this room constructed, soundproof, and included an unbreakable window. You should so you could have sunlight. I wanted you to be happy in our life together. And she says, you, you'll you never get away with this. And she reminds him, my dear, I already have. Try to adjust. Won't you 
Perhaps I'll even have a second room built for you once we're married. And she's like, Mary, but I'm already. And she's like, no use. He's gone. Oh, Peter, I love you, Peter. Find me. And of course, by the window here, Spider-Man, which of course we get a nice little close up of it. So. And so he's looking for her. Um, here and here, just using great. This is McFarlane already. Look at the freaking webbing already. He has already. He has finally mastered. Um, he's gone through it from issue two ninety eight and now on issue three oh eight. So about eight months, he has finally gotten the web that we have. Um, that we're used to and he actually will make it even by the time he's done on his solo spider-man series it he gets it even crazier um than that but what a beautiful shot of spidey here look at this just gorgeous and of course um he's still giving him a nose but eventually it's just from here and then a flat but He's still giving it the nose. Um, love it. And of course, McFarlane has these cheeks. Or not, sorry, chins. Um, and if you remember, as you've been following this, from the beginning, you, you'll see that the chin, um, every month, uh, the McFarlane mannerisms are getting a little bit more from what you see now. So, the next day here, we, we got the Twin Towers here. And uh, Peter's answering the phone. I'm sorry, she's not in. I don't know when she'll be back. Yes, I'll tell her you called. Goodbye. And her, uh, I think this is her agent. Uh, Peter tells her, I'm tired of making excuses. I think I'll let the answering machine, uh, let the machine answer it for a while. That was what uh, people in the 80s and 90s and even the early 2000s um, had before voicemail. So... And she says, I understand, Peter. Um, thanks, Ginny. The police asked that Mary Jane's disappear and be kept quiet to prevent any phony ransom calls. The only reason I told you. Um, and of course, she's uh, taking a message. Was because your publicity firm is handling my book tour. Oh, so it's not MJ's uh, uh, agent. My bad. Um, and... Uh, I had to explain why I'm canceling my appearance in Queens this afternoon. Um, and she says, I think you should reconsider, Peter, for your sake. You need something to take your mind off things. And he says, I don't know, Ginny. I'm just not up for it. I can't think of any possible good that could come from. And then, of course, the answer machine. Peter, this is Aunt May. I'm sorry I missed you. But so he ends up picking the phone here. And so she, I love this again. He is a master of the, uh, of, of the silhouette. Just, just great. So, um, Aunt May basically says, "Oh, I'm so excited for the signing. My na my uh, nephew, a famous celebrity." And she's like, "What time?" And of course, it's three o'clock. I'll be there at three. So. He's going to end up doing the signing here. So, at uh, Ardmore's Bookstore in Forest Hills, Queen. So, and, uh, and so one of the things that they had up until J. Michael Straczynski took over as writer on Spider-Man in the early 2000s was Aunt May was portrayed as an ancient relic more of a grandmother and i'm talking like in her 90s type than um than a normal you know 60 year old i mean they really portrayed her as super old because that's that's how uh steve did go portrayed her so um so of course when she goes and dates someone she finds someone that is like ready to go on it so she's like in her 80s during this time but they have gone a, done a great job to de-age her because i think look so if we if we all right so let's say 
Uh, so she was married to Ben, who was the um, older brother of his dad. Now, let's say he was five years older. All right. So the average person gets married. Now, this is the 60s, so they get married young. But let's just say that Peter was born when his dad was 25, all right? That would have put Ben Parker at 30, okay? His wife would have been younger. So let's just say she would have been 27, 28. Let's just assume using that logic. So um, you would have then... Uh, Peter was a teenager, all right? So let's add, uh, fi let's just say uh, 15, 16 years because he was still in high school during Amazing Fantasy. So that would have made her, let's just say 45. So she would have been 45. And if you go back to Amazing Fantasy, she was put in as if she was a freaking... 80 year old all right so now we've aged peter to about 30 all right so she would be 60 at most for god's sakes so that's kind of why i want to go through that's my little tangent so i'm very glad they de-aged her i think they should de-age her a little bit more so Anyway, so Nathan says here, well, at least we know the boy can write. So how come he never writes home? Well, he lives in New York, same as you. Uh, so, and of course, Aunt May is like, ah, oh, hush, Nathan. She's really proud. She brings her copy, so he signs it. She asks, she says he looks a little rough here. And he says, well, I have been kind of restless lately. But don't worry, Aunt May. Things will be better tonight. And so... Um, the black cat is coming to visit Peter. She does not know that he's married. Of course, the doorman won't let him in. And he wonders if Mrs. Parker knows anything about her. Um, but of course, she doesn't know, like I said, that Peter is married. So, all right. Peter had gotten a lead in that uh, scene where I was saying how beautiful um, his webs were. So uh, Spider-Man says, I'm going to kill him. Uh, Chili Bono couldn't get names or details, but he said the man who'd been talking revenge on Spider-Man was headquartered here. Yeah, right. I love this with how that angle looks wonderful. Look at this. But as I'm up against Beetlejuice, this trip seems to be a bust. Maybe I'll just head back to Manhattan, look up Mr. Bono, and pull the man's intestines through his nostrils. So, always a full moon. Huh, spider sense tingling. And suddenly all these people come in. And this guy says, wow, what a training exercise. Yeah, the boss hired someone to dress up like that goofball Spider-Man. Seems strange that while I'm dodging bullets, but I feel better now. Which is gonna be more than I can say for these bozos so and so he starts taking them out and this guy like I said oh the guy must be a professional so and here we go just some good McFarlane action look at that oh so nice I love the webbing for the panel borders now do I need to get start getting rough or do you tell me where your boss is He's he's right behind you now. I want you to look at this amazing view of the Taskmaster. And he says, Evening Slick, remember me? And so we got Ramita, Ditko, Kane, Friends, JRJR, former Andrew, uh, all former uh, Spider-Man artists. Um, and I think all were alive during this time. So great picture of the Taskmaster. He's not even standing straight, just kind of, uh, you can see he's kind of bent a little bit uh, on once. Just awesome, uh, just perfect. And so I'm the taskmaster, of course, he says. And again, 
And it tells us here the last time they met up, Marvel Twin One Number Three. I remember, but I thought you were in jail. I was, except I cut a deal with the feds. You see, basically, in Captain America three hundred and thirty-four. I am covering Captain America. I have not gotten to that issue yet, but I will be. I'm a businessman, an educator. I run a string of schools where I train muscle for the supervillain trade, but it's kind of, but it, it it's a nice living, but kind of hard to do from a jail cell. So I, hey, you listening? And he grabs that tombstone of the cross and he's like, where is she? Um, and of course, um, he doesn't have anything to do. And they're like, where'd he go? What makes you think I know? No bull. You're next. Where? And he breaks that. Uh, the mausoleum's main complex underground. So, um, I don't know. He must be a tree that he's, he's, uh, doing it. But again, another great, uh, panel here, um, with Spider-Man in action. It just looks, um, so good. Um, this leg's a little fat, I understand, because it's, it's bent over, but it's, but who am I to criticize the great Todd McFarlane, but still, that leg is a little too fat. And so, nice vertical panel, McFarlane and, uh, Frank Miller, again, the, the comparison of these two are amazing, but, uh, Peter's very angry, he rips that door, and he's got more henchmen, and he says, listen up, gents, $10,000 to the man who brings me his heart. 2000 if it's, uh, I'm sorry, 1000 bucks. 2000 if it's still beating. And so they all fire at him, and uh, Spider-Man then evades the bullets. Um, and you can see um, Taskmaster's running away. And the guy up here says, he's dodging the bullets, boss, every one of them. Then use your hand, stop him, or you don't graduate. And so... <laughs> Spider-Man breaks the floor and uh, picks it up. Who's ready for finals? Go! It's not really that diploma that's important. Yeah, it's the education. Uh, <laughs> so they all run away here. All right, Taskmaster, just you and me. And so you're nuts. I never heard of this Mary Lou Wilson. And so um, here we go. We're just going to kind of uh, move the story along here. Um, check out the Marvel, um, website that I, uh, the link that I provided down there. If you want to know more about ta Taskmaster and his origin, but Spider-Man is having none of it here. You can see that he's like, talk. And, uh, um, he's like, come on, that magnesium flare worked before because I wasn't expecting it. I'll just close my eyes. And he says, I'm not trying to blind you, smart guy. Look around you. We're in a munitions room. And so, try prancing through this. And so, the flare sets up the ammo, which the Taskmaster now is going to go away. And so, Taskmaster says, um, here's the pardon shot. I don't have the broad. If I did, don't you think I'd razz you about now? And of course, Spider-Man goes, of course he'd rub it in. So... And so he uh, stops the mess. Look at him. Oh, just the shoulders down. He watches the fire, which I don't know why there's no firefighters, but that's all right. And so he stopped them, but he's like big, hairy deal. And we end as he's looking out. And look at Mary Jane here. And he wonders, Mary Jane, where are you? So... Next issue, beginnings and endings. Be here in two weeks for Sticks and Stone. Amazing Spider-Man 308, David Michelini slash Michelini, and Todd McFarlane. Like and subscribe. I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.